We have a very diverse community, one of the most diverse in New York State. We are now the third largest city in New York State behind Buffalo and of course New York City. We are seeing a real gap with adolescent offenders. We see older gang members, 18, 19, 20, 22, 25, manipulating younger kids that are 14, 15, 16 years old and having them do the shootings. And we've seen a real uptick in gun violence. And the problem is, is that there are no consequences for this under 18 age set. The Mom Summit was an iteration of Operation Ceasefire just with a younger group of kids. And so the first step we do is we bring in the mothers without the kids and we talk with them with the Board of Education, social services, and then we'll bring in and find out what she needs. Is it just her child? Does he have rent insecurity? Does she have food insecurity? Are there addiction issues? And then putting together a strategy with social services where they kind of take over. Certainly as an educational institution, we have to play a very important role in, in the Mom Summit to change the trajectory for many of our young people whom unfortunately may be having difficulties with the law. We have to accept the fact that uh, many young people are being raised by single mothers who are young mothers as well. So why not create a network of support for those mothers so that when things are not going well in the household, they have a support system whom they can rely on. Moms got together with their mayor, with their police commissioner, with representatives from Westchester County, Department of Social Services, Department of Corrections, the entire gambit of individuals who will frankly have an effect on your child and their, that child's future. And where we can say, how can we help? You tell us. What I got was straight out open conversation about what's happening in the community. And maybe we all learned from that day, but it was definitely a greater understanding for me and that, that will always help. We think this is a good start to identify those kids. And again, it's a small subset. This is trying to get to the kid and to the family before the kid becomes a first level shooter when he's 16 or 17. The diversion programs are primarily centered on non-violent crimes, property crimes. A kid brings a knife to school. These are things we can fix through a different way of, of, as opposed to punitive and arresting. And so we don't want to give kids a record. So what we do is we use the youth, the youth court system, which they are judged by their own peers and they're forwarded to community service. Groundwork Hudson Valley launched a new partnership with the Yonkers Police Department to really empower young people that have committed minor infractions in their community. And the community service that they do is they come to us at Groundwork and they help to do a number of different environmental restoration projects that help address climate change in our neighborhoods. So they're planting trees, they're removing invasive species. And so once they complete their service with Groundwork, what happens is the infraction is removed from their criminal record. If they get into this kind of work, we are also recruiting them for paid jobs in our summer youth employment program. So instead of the school to prison pipeline, we're looking at the school to community service to environmental jobs pipeline. And I think that is really exciting and can potentially be a model for other um, police departments across the country. The role of police officers in our schools is essential, not just as law enforcers, but also partners, as friends, as individuals who can carry a message to our young people that police officers are also there as members of the community. There's opportunities there to build relationships very, very early, nine, 10, seven, where their first interaction with the police department is healthy. The same thing with pizza with the police, coffee with a cop, stop and shake. These are all things where it's just kind of a happenstance interaction with the cops and community where pay for some pizza, have people come in and just have a conversation. Everyone walks away with a little bit more. The Yonkers Police Department is very important to YWCA Yonkers and also to this community that we all serve. One of the programs that we did was a couple of officers from the Community Affairs Division. They met with some of the youth that we had here at YWCA Yonkers. And they had uh, just a basic dialogue with the youth that may not have had an opportunity to understand what cops are about or were afraid to approach them. They got to a chance to just talk to men and women, not just as police officers, but just as, hey, we're, we're normal, just like you, we're talking. 
every single time we have a recruitment drive for the police department, we set up a table and we partner with them to get the community engaged. So it's, it, it works. This department, as time goes by, with all the initiatives that they have put forth, will become more reflective of the community that it serves. There'll be children, especially children of color, who will choose policing as a good vocation, something that they want to do because they see police officers and they see the job they do as something that they can do. And when the more that they see police officers, especially police officers who look like them, I think that the future is bright. It's a policing state of grace. It's keeping crime down in a way that the community says, yes, we're behind the Yonkers Police Department. We support how they're doing it. We support what they're doing it. And we feel like we're better off for it. That is the ultimate mission. And it should be the mission for everybody.